it's terrible uh, being an intelligent woman trapped in a Scottish accent. And living in <laughs> I didn't know this was my voice till I moved to England, right? In my head, I talk like Stephen Fry. And then uh, <laughs> moved down south and started going into shops and people just looked at me like a dog was barking at them. <laughs> so <laughs> I've lived there for 10 years and it's largely great. The shops are open for ages, but one of the hardest things <laughs> is every day for the last decade, what my English friends love to do to me is repeat what I'm saying back at me in a bad Scottish accent. <laughs> and they always have a look in their eyes like, she is gonna love when I do this. <laughs> every day. I've got one friend that does it all the time. Her name's Hayley. She's always like, Fern, this is my impression of you. Hello, I'm Fern Brady! <laughs> Thanks, Hayley. I feel so comfortable. This is my impression of you. Please don't tell everybody about the time I gave everyone at uni chlamydia. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, still not getting that Cockney accent, you fucking okay. Probably the hardest thing is negotiating with a child using every ounce of creativity and guile and cunning and a song to try and convince them to do something that you personally could not give a shit about, right? Something you have no personal stake in whatsoever. So you're there going, just put your shoes on. Just put your shoes on. We're going to leave the house. Come on, put your shoes on. We can all go. Put, I've got my shoes on. Mummy's got her shoes on. Your baby sister's got her shoes on. Doesn't need shoes. Can't walk. Put your shoes on. Put your shoes Just put your shoes on. Please put your... Okay, please, seriously, man to man, put your shoes on. Just put your shoes on. Let's, let's sing the shoe song. Shoes are good. Everyone thinks that you should put your shoe, put your shoe, put your shoes on, put your shoes on, put your shoes on. Fine, fine, do you know what? Walk outside, lacerate your feet to ribbons on the broken glass that I've left there specifically to teach you a lesson. <laughs> because you have stolen from me even the luxury of suicide. <laughs> that was too much, that was too much, that was too much, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> We're, we're murder broad British people. We're, we're mental. You know there's British people, right, who go on cruises and they don't even get off the ship. <laughs> I actually respect those people. I think that's where I want to get to my life eventually, that level of arrogance. <laughs> just to turn up in a new country you've never been to before, look out the window and just be like, nah. <laughs> where are we, Greece? Fuck it, I'm going to watch Kung Fu Panda in the cinema room. Soon a bit. <laughs> Organised people are attracted to disorganised because the first time they see them, they fall for a trick because they go, wow, they're so laid back. <laughs> they must have everything organised. <laughs> and then a few months passes, the smoke screen leaves you. And you're just left going, how are you not dead yet? <laughs> and by this point, it's too late because you're thinking, I wonder if I should break up with them because I thought they'd be organised, but in fact they're disorganised and I'm having to organise my life and their life. I'm exhausted, I haven't slept ever since I met them. Oh my, maybe I should break up with them. I can't break up with them. I've made plans for us both. I love cocktails. I find them delicious. I find them fruity. I find them scrumptious. <laughs> and you know why that's so significant? Ask yourselves as an audience, you ever even heard a six foot one black man use the word scrumptious before? <laughs> that's how much they mean to me. You see there white guys in the room, there's words that I can't use too. <laughs> also, a vegans don't want you to be vegan, that's a myth. A vegan's worst nightmare is a world in which everybody is vegan. Because in a world in which everybody is vegan, there's no such word as vegan anymore, and the people who were originally vegan are left going, but what word means I'm better than you now? <laughs> a quick safety notice for women, like, when you're leaving on a night out, let your friends do the dance around you. You know, the dance, like, text me when you get home safe, text me when you get home safe, I'm gonna track your journey, text me, text me, text me. <laughs> which is so important, you really you have to text your friends when you get home safe. It's just that me, personally, I like to wait an hour. <laughs> to see who really cares. I used to go and get ice cream. I wasn't making classy choices. I didn't have a mature palate. 
I'd run in there. I'd say, give me the triple chop chip surprise. Give me the hokey pokey goo -ga. Give me the rocky road bubble gum idiot dickhead. <laughs> Childish flavours. I don't get uh, ice cream anymore. I don't get ice cream anymore. I get gelato. <laughs> I sidle into the gelatismo. Wearing a silk tuxedo. <laughs> they say, what would you like? I don't ogle the selections. I don't lean against the glass. I lean back as far as I can. And I make my mouth really, really small. And I say, pistachio. Ever seen a, a gladiator die before? No? Well, you, well, you can see this in films like uh, Troy or, or 300 or you know, even uh, a, a gladiator. <laughs> Anytime someone gets killed by a sword, they'll fall to their knees in slow motion. For some reason, this will happen. It'll be like this again. It's depressing. I find it very depressing. And you can see the difference between Americans and British confidence in the way that we market our towns. So, like, uh, Americans will have a, a huge plaque, huge sign outside their town saying, Welcome to Historic Tote, population 704. Visit our museum. Visit our cultural centre. Take in all the wild stories that make up this sweet town that was formed in ye olde 1976. <laughs> Whereas in Britain, we've got like a small sign that says, founded by William the Conqueror, but we've got 12 vape shops. <laughs> I used to love fictional crime, police procedurals. Love them. But now, we've all become a little more disillusioned with the police over the last two years, it's fair to say. And so when they go, this detective is a loose cannon who doesn't play by the rules. It's like, oh, fire another one. <laughs> oh, fuck. Can't one of them play by the rules? <laughs> You can't have a whole ship of loose cannons. That sounds incredibly dangerous. <laughs> it's a cannon. It shouldn't be loose ever, should it? Uh, rolling around, exploding on stuff. Uh, you gotta get to the point where you, uh, the police procedure is gonna be, he's a detective who is aware of human rights. You go, wow. <laughs> wow. And it's set in America. Wow. Who knew it was even possible? Listen, live your own life, but if you have a home birth, when people come around to visit, you will have lost all authority to ask them to take their shoes off, right? <laughs> take my shoes, there's placenta on your floor. I'm putting wellies on, fuck this. It's like the Manson Ranch in here. Nothing's ever enough for America. Nothing. There is an American flag on the moon. There is an American flag on the moon. If there's one thing in life that can't be claimed, surely it's the moon, but no, the moon's American. Makes sense, of course the moon's American. It's white, it's round. It's inexplicably involved in women's reproductive organs. Yeah, it makes sense. 